first story. My estranged mom, who abandoned me at six months old after two failed attempts to kill me and then selling me to a cult, has come back after 16 years to build a relationship, claiming she has changed. My delusional father is forcing me to reconcile, forgetting the pain she caused us both. Please forgive me if this is bad. I'm new, and this is my first time posting. So, I'm 16 years old, and my mother basically walked out of my life when I was six months old. Now she had a very good reason as to why, and I can honestly say that giving my father full custody was the best thing she could have ever done for me. But because I never understood why she gave me up when I was younger, I always wanted her in my life, even after all the bad things she'd done to me. I won't go into much detail because it still hurts to talk about it. But I've almost died twice in the care of my mother and been put in danger many times because of her choices. This woman has not only put my life in danger, but has also stolen from me many times and hurt me emotionally so many times over the years that I'm just done. Now, out of the blue, she wants to have a relationship with me, and my dad is basically forcing me to comply despite knowing the pain she's put both of us through. I will admit she's changed a lot over the past few years, but I just don't think I can handle letting her back into my life again after so much pain. So I guess the question is, Ada, update. My estranged mother wants to see me F-17 and won't really take no for an answer. Now, I know how it sounds. I understand that she is just a mother who wants to see her only child. But please understand that being with my mother is not good for me in any way. I've never had my mother in my life. It's always been me and my father since I was six months old. I have nearly come close to literal death twice in her care when I was younger, and have been put in numerous dangerous situations with her leaving me with her side of the family. They are not good people, especially with children. My father never badmouthed my mother to me. She has had so many chances to see me, and I have given her countless second chances throughout my life. Even when I lived in one state for eight years, and she lived only 30 minutes away, I saw her only three times in those eight years. Basically, up until 2017, I never had a relationship with my mother. In 2017, when I was 14, she started to slowly move into my life, and it was then that I realized that I couldn't have her in my life. She is a reoccurring bad thing in my life and every time I let her in, it leaves me in a bad place. The relationship I have with her now is one-sided, with her constantly trying to force a relationship between us and me trying to avoid it as much as possible. She threatens to bring in lawyers and take my father to court in order to have me, it wouldn't work because of her criminal history and her not paying child support, as well as other incidents that prove it's better for me not to see her. This past month, she's been pestering my father and me about having me for Christmas. My father said no. While I just avoided her text yes, I am in the wrong for doing so. My father said no because 1. I do not want to see her. 2. She forced him to give me up for Christmas last year. And 3. I am living with my grandparents both of whom are high risk for the virus. Number 3 is very crucial to this story. Today, I received a text from my mother saying she would be seeing me in 2 weeks. In summary, I told her that I would not be seeing her in 2 weeks because I live with my grandparents and they are high risk to the virus and where I live, my state is the highest COVID state in the US. I would also not be seeing her because I have school in the next four days. I told her that I needed to think not only about my education, but also about my family, since seeing her could possibly put my grandparents at risk for the virus. Now here's where things get bad. My mother then texted me, saying that she'd already had the virus, and that, reinfection is a minimal risk. While yes, it's rare I looked it up with my grandmother, it is still possible to be reinfected. I told her as such, and I told her that even if she has caught the virus already or not, I still cannot take this risk for my grandparents. So, if anything, it's worse if she's already had the virus because we don't know if she could still be carrying it or whatever. We don't know how this virus works since it's still new and could mutate. Y'all may think my family and I are overreacting, but my grandparents are high risk, not only because of their age, but also because my grandfather has had cancer twice and plenty of other health issues that leave his immune system weak. Furthermore, we don't know if she's lying about already having it just to see me. She texts me a lot, and I know she would text and call me a thousand times if she had COVID to guilt trip me into spending time with her. She has lied a lot about my family, and I know she would indeed pull something like that. My mother is a very toxic person in my life, and after more than a decade of trying to have her in my life, I'm done. It's only when I want her out does she want to force her way into things without thinking of the consequences, even in the middle of a pandemic. I'm sorry for the long post. But overall, the question in this is, what should I do? Do I just blatantly tell her I want her out of my life and do not want a relationship? 
Or should I stick with my grandparents' health and let her down easy? Update. A couple of things I want to say. I'm sorry if this isn't the proper way to update posts. I'm not sure how these things work, to be honest. But the other is that I want to thank everyone from before who gave me support in the comments section and took time out of their day to give me some advice and hear me out. Now for the update. Today, I woke up with countless texts from my mother stating that just because I feel abandoned by her and have abandonment issues, I will admit. For a couple of years I did feel abandoned, but I understand the reason why she gave my father majority custody. It's the reason for not being a part of my life after the fact that hurts me. But that doesn't mean that I can't have a relationship with her now. She thinks my father and his family poisoned me against her, and that I'm just not thinking clearly due to the almost two decades worth of toxicity and lies my family fed me. I wanted to respond to her by saying that it was she who actually opened my eyes to the truth of who she is as a person and individual. But I talked it over with my grandmother, who then called my dad to see what should be done. My dad was already on his way home, so he said he'd talk to me about it when he got back to the house. When my dad got here, he told me that she my mother had been texting and calling his phone since the day she said she was coming to visit me. He's been ignoring her messages and told me to do so as well. From what he had kind of read, my mother had been telling him that I was begging to see her, but wasn't allowed to because he wouldn't give me up and have a mom in my life. He told me that he never believed a word she said due to her past history, and because he knew I didn't want to see her. Period. My dad also said to not tell her about him or our living situation at all, because she can use that in court should she try to bring in lawyers again like last year. He told me that he avoided badmouthing her to me, because he did hope that one day I'd want to reach out and try to have a connection with her. My father isn't the best dad out there, but he does try, and he's changed a lot over the years and done so much for my future. The most my father ever told me about my mother is that she wasn't mentally well. But when I was younger, she was still well enough to understand that life with him would be better for me. Now that I'm older, I know the full story and have opened my eyes to her true personality. My mother has changed a lot over the years by cutting out drugs and alcohol, even getting married to an actually decent guy. But she is still not a good force in my life due to the continuous lying and emotional turmoil she's put the family through. I told my father what she had been texting me as well. And he laughed, saying that while yes, bringing in lawyers would be pointless. We still don't want to go through the money and mental and emotional exhaustion with it. We've decided to just block her. And if she does try to come see me, we're going to deal with it as much as possible before bringing in legal help. Thanks again so much for those who gave me support in my previous post. I can't begin to express the amount of gratitude I feel towards y'all. Update. Honestly, I've come here way too often with crap about my mother. But I don't know what to do anymore. To keep the backstory as to why we're estranged short and simple, my mother has left me with my father basically since I was born. They finally divorced when I was maybe three, and it's just been me and my dad since. I've nearly died twice in her care as a young child. She's left me with dangerous members of her family before, stolen from me, and then blamed me before changing the story three more times, and in the eight years we lived thirty minutes apart from each other. I only saw her three times. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Now, onto the present day drama. Today, I woke up with three texts from my mother. The first literally saying, I never left you. You were with me in Germany. We were together. Germany is my birthplace and where most of the divorce happened, which is why she brought it up. I want to clarify that her leaving me with my father in Germany nearly 15 years ago has nothing to do with my abandonment issues with her. I have these issues because of all the stuff and much more she has done in the past that I listed above. The rest of the messages go on to say that while I may be turning 18 soon roughly two weeks now, she's still my mother, and that I need to talk with her if I want to know everything about the past. I already know enough about the past, her past, and my parents' relationship. I already know all of it. And while I do eventually want a relationship with her, I know that I need to work on myself before I do, because I know that I will not be able to handle this all in a healthy manner. But now she seems to think that I don't associate with her because of Germany, and that apparently I shouldn't have feelings of abandonment because she never left me. I don't even know what to say to her without blowing up. I could just read her texts without getting angry or hurt. I understand she's a mother who just wants to see her only child. And yes, she has changed quite a bit in terms of stopping drinking and smoking. But I'm still messed up over what's happened. I'm still hurting, and even though over the years I've tried to have a relationship with her and tried healing, it's stuff like this her texts that makes it worse. I don't want to make this longer than it already is. So basically my questions are. What do I even say to her? How do I try to get it through to her 
that I feel this way for completely other reasons. And how should I go about handling this? Update on true off my chest. I don't recognize my father anymore. And I'm scared I might go into zero contact with him like I did with my mother. I'm a 19-year-old woman. It's sort of needed for the post. It's a long, complicated story. So I'll try not to go on too long. But here's the story. My mother and I have a very one-sided relationship in terms of texting me on a daily basis and calling me on a biweekly basis, while I ignore her and work out my issues in therapy. I no longer talk to my mother for a lot of reasons, but the top one is that her family is dangerous, and she nearly baptized me into a cult. I have a fear of religion, and while being raised Christian myself, I've rather drifted away from faith. My father, however, for the past year after coming back from Kuwait and retiring from the military, has been clinging to religion and the Bible since his deployment. My father spent 22 years in the Air Force. He just got out right after the government declared that military people might be obliged to take the COVID vaccine, he's anti-vax, BTW, and before he could start the process of leaving, he was deployed to Kuwait for six months. Another thing you should know about my father is that he drinks a lot, and in Kuwait, you can't have any alcohol. My uncle, my father's second oldest brother, told me that whenever my father was deployed to the desert, he would get super into the Bible, and after he would return and get alcohol, he would return to normal. So I was expecting some religious preaching from my dad. What I wasn't expecting, however, was for my father to mix religion with politics, real-life events, and the vaccine into one big conspiracy theory ball, and for him to completely become a borderline not a cultist, but one of those overzealous religious people who say bad things happen because God wanted them to. And it's for good, you know. My father, despite being a Christian man, wants our family to practice Sabbath, which is traditionally a Judaism practice and bake bread on this Sabbath Akka Saturday, and even went as far as to go on a tirade on his own mother, who's Mormon, and say, and this is summed up, not exactly verbatim, I am a man, and you are a woman, I'm telling you to break bread and celebrate Sabbath on Saturday, so do it. My grandma obviously said no, and told him she wasn't going to practice what wasn't her religion. It's been stuff like that, where I'm beginning to not recognize my father. I'm still living at home, and while I'm mostly independent, my father has been more controlling and demanding of me, only calling me his child and a young kid whenever I try and do things on my own. He's even taken to saying I can no longer leave the house for whatever reason on Saturdays. I work Monday through Friday, and Sundays are really my only true day off, because I'm either doing chores or preparing for college. Or if I can, I make time for my boyfriend. He still drinks, my father. But he's also preaching nonstop about the Bible and saying how the world is ending soon and how nothing really matters anymore because we are not for this world. He's also taken to calling me a demon sometimes, or evil, or straight up saying I'm going to hell. I don't recognize him anymore. I don't even like calling him dad because the dad I had was always helpful and supported me when he could. Now the man I call my father says I'm going to hell. How I'll fail like he did with some college classes and how nothing matters anyway. It's confusing and terrifying, and I don't know what to do other than work out how the hell I'm going to get out of that house by the end of the year or by August. I'm just sad to say that once I'm out, I might have no contact with him because he's not the man I had growing up. He's like a total stranger. I miss my dad. I love my dad. But the man I live with, while he's my father, doesn't know if I can be there any longer without going crazy myself. Sorry for the long rant, but I just needed to get this out. Update. He's still around but he's not who I remember. I'm a little drunk, and I remember who he was before his last deployment. The dad I had wasn't the best, but he tried to be a single father. Sure, he drank. Sure, he raised me with his millions of girlfriends and a few wives. Sure, he left me alone way too often, and I grew up watching not the best stuff. But he was still my dad. He was my father, and I miss him so much. Something flipped in him when I became a teenager, but we still had fun, and we had each other. Me and you against the world, baby girl. We have each other backs forever. That was what he would say to me every night he tucked me in, or on those nights when he had way too much to drink. Now, he's pretty sober. He has my little brother and my latest stepmom whom I love, and he found God. But the God he found is terrifying, and he turned my father into this insane religious, conservative-obsessed man who tried to lock me up in a house. Ever since my father was deployed to Kuwait three years ago, something changed in him, and in that desert, he found God and clung to him like a sailor clinging to the remains of a sunken ship. I'm not upset that he's mostly sober, or that he found himself in religion once more. I just wish that he didn't hate me so much or judge me like he does. I'm only 20. I just want to live my life. I love my father.
but I'll always mourn my dad who did my hair for ballet. My dad who comforted me when mom cancelled again for her weekend. My dad who let me stay up and watch scary movies. And my dad who comforted me and let me take a day or two off school when I was really sad. I miss my dad, who loved me unconditionally and always had my back. I miss my dad. I mourn him every day, even if I see him every now and again. I wish I could tell him how much I miss him. Second story. OP wants to reconcile with his adoptive brother, after bullying him all over his life for being adoptive until he moved out. So OP contacted him, expecting to build a relationship, only to re-traumatize him all over again, ruining his one last chance. My biological cousin was legally adopted by my parents. When he was seven years old his father was never around. And his birth mother, my father's sister, was a drug addict who did time and eventually moved to another state and never came back. The thing is, I was a jerk to him from the start. Being a spoiled little brat used to being an only child, I was very jealous of him. My reaction was to say mean and hurtful things to him, when no one else was around things like his parents didn't want him, and he had no family. I wish this was just childish behavior, but it got worse in my teens. I'd never introduce him as my brother to friends or in school, and I can see now what a bully I was at every chance. Our parents, who always just wanted for us to get along, tried their best from serious talks to grounding me. And you can imagine how every punishment I got just made me undeservedly resent him more. To make matters worse, the abuse was very one-sided. He never snapped back at me or put me in my place. Now, through therapy, I can understand how he always looked for my approval and affection. It breaks my heart to think of all the things I put him through. I've decided I'll reach out to him and try to apologize. But I don't know how to even start this conversation as you can see. We're not close, and it will be an awkward talk. Also, what can I possibly say that will erase years of mistreatment? Even if he doesn't immediately forgive me, he's still my brother, and will be in each other's lives. So I also wonder what I can do even small acts to show him I want to build a new relationship. I appreciate any help you can give me. TLDR. I was a jerk to my adopted brother all of my life, and I'm trying to find the best way to approach him and make things right. Edit. Everyone, thank you all for the advice and for that kind silver. I read all your comments and will try to reply to some of them later on. Right now I'm inclined to meet up with him, which I feel knowing myself and him would be better than doing it over a letter, video, or call. But I plan to make my intentions clear beforehand so he can opt out if he doesn't feel comfortable diving into this. I'll keep you posted. Edit 2. I called him up last night, and he agreed to meet me today to discuss our relationship. I made a new post detailing our encounter. Update. Previously, I asked for advice on how to approach my adoptive brother. What was the best way to apologize, and how to try to start a new, better relationship since we are now very distant, and only see each other sporadically at our parents' house? I called him up last night and he agreed to meet me so we could talk about how things between us used to be. This is how it went. So, my brother came by around 7.30pm. I did my best to hide how nervous I was about the conversation we were about to have. I made a small chat, showed him my place he'd never been here before, asked about his job and his studies, asked if he had been talking to our parents, and things like that. I suggested we order a pizza, and, soon after I ordered, he asked what I wanted to talk about. I didn't know how the conversation would go, and didn't want us to get interrupted midway through by the pizza guy, so I said it could wait. I noticed he seemed anxious as well, especially because he still didn't have a clear picture of what I wanted to discuss. After a moment of uncomfortable silence, he got a call and was on the phone for about 10 minutes. I could tell he was talking to some girl, and I asked him about her. He then asked if I had dated anyone since my ex, and we talked about that until the pizza arrived. We ate and relived some memories from our lives together, like he remembered, I don't like olives and our pizza and a movie night. It was the closest and most relaxed we'd been around each other in years, and I was suddenly optimistic and confident about the hard conversation we were about to have. After we were done eating, while we were still sitting at the table, the elephant in the room was back. He looked at me and asked, So, what was it that you wanted to talk about? And then I spoke. And for a while, only I spoke. I said I've been wanting to talk to him for a while, but didn't know how he was going to react, and I made it clear that if he felt uncomfortable in any way, he could say so and I would drop it. I said I kept thinking about the way I treated him since he came to live with us, and how just the thought of it makes me sick, and if it's that painful for me to remember, I can't imagine what it was like for him. While I spoke, he just sat there, silent and avoiding eye contact. I said that, through therapy, 
I was closer to understanding why I acted the way I did being jealous, confused, and insecure. But I made it clear that I wasn't making excuses and didn't want him to think I was trying to justify anything. I told him how sorry I was for all those days I made him not feel welcome in our family or less of a brother to me. Because that's not how I feel now, and really, it wasn't how I felt then. I was nervous, but I kept it together and thought things were going reasonably well. And that's when I made a mistake. I thought, since I'm apologizing, I should give some specific examples of how I messed up and really own up to my bad behavior. But as soon as I started naming some of the things I was sorry for like all the times I told him he wasn't my real brother and that he didn't have a family, he started to cry he had his head down. But I could see tears running down his face and even had the impression he was shaking a bit. I didn't know how to react if his crying was a healthy reaction or an indication that I should stop talking. So what I did was lean forward and try to touch his shoulder. Bad idea. He got up really fast and told me not to touch him. He went to the bathroom, presumably to wash his face and recompose, and was there for a while. I don't even know how long. After sitting at the table alone for what seemed like an eternity, angry at myself for messing this up, I got up, knocked on the bathroom door, and called his name. I didn't know if I should leave him there for as long as he needed it. But in all of the scenarios I'd played in my head, none of them included him locking himself in my bathroom. I was going off script here. I knocked again and told him I was sorry. We didn't have to talk about it anymore. Could he just please tell me if he was okay? He opened the door, left the bathroom, passed by me, and went back to the living room to get his wallet and keys from the table. I followed him, asking him to please don't go. He still hadn't looked at me or said a word. I was expecting he'd yell and hit me, and honestly, it couldn't have been worse than what was going on. Then he finally spoke, loud but not yelling. He asked me why I had to bring all this up again. I said I shouldn't have. I made a mistake. And we didn't have to talk about it ever again if he didn't want to. I just thought it was something that could help ease his pain and maybe improve our relationship for us and for our parents. That was big mistake number two. But one that at least got him talking. He became really mad at the mention of our parents and told me that I had no right to bring them into this. Since I'm the one who always made things difficult and never cared about their suffering. He went on to say that I was just trying to relieve myself from guilt, and that I'm an arsy hole who can't think of anyone but myself. And he went on for a while bashing me, inventing about what a piece of crap I am keep in mind. He has a very non-confrontational personality, and never retaliated to the abuse I put him through. So that was something new. I just took it in because it's true, and I deserve to hear that. I made sure he was done venting before I told him he was right. I am selfish, but I'm trying to do better and the way I treated him was the biggest regret of my life, and I just didn't want him to spend one more day taking all of that to heart. By then, I had sat down again, and he did so as well, which seemed to calm things down a bit. I said we didn't have to talk about it anymore, and that he could take his time to process what I'd said, but to my surprise, he carried on. He asked me what I wanted from him forgiveness. I said it wasn't my place to expect that, but that I hoped that, someday, he wouldn't feel so hurt by my past actions, and, if so, Maybe we can be in each other's lives eventually. Maybe one day he'll see me as the brother he can talk to, or just hang out sometimes and get together to play earlier. When I was showing him around, he was impressed by my PS5. He then said it's not that easy, that he's getting on with his life, and has already made peace with the fact that I'm not part of it. It hurt me to hear that, but I understood. Feeling there was nothing left to be said, I apologized if I'd hurt him again by bringing all this up. He just nodded. We were left with that awkward feeling of an uncomfortable conversation. I mentioned I had beer and asked if he wanted to have some and play Call of Duty, which I know he likes. But he said he had to get home. I was disappointed, but I could tell he needed his time. As he got up to leave, I asked if I'd see him for our dad's birthday next month. And he said yeah, sure. We said goodbye. And I told him I'm here for him if he ever changes his mind about building a relationship. He was quiet for a moment and said, thanks. Which doesn't really mean much but it meant a lot to me, like the acknowledgement of a possibility. So there you go. I said what I had to say. It wasn't perfect, but it is what it is. He's not in a place where he can forgive me yet, much less willing to give the relationship a shot. This all just happened, so I can't tell if the conversation did more harm than good. I got to thinking that bringing up the past not only triggered his memories of the abuse I put him through, but also of a very difficult time in his life being abandoned by his birth mother being adopted by his aunt and uncle, and of course, having an arsy hole for a brother. He went through some serious SHT, I can't begin to understand, and maybe it wasn't fair of me to make him relive all of that. From my part, 
I'll respect his wishes and let him be for a while. Thanks to anyone who read this all the way through. I just have a few last questions. Based on how it went, do you get the feeling we can get a positive outcome out of this? Also, now that I've had the talk with him, should I give my parents a heads up about what happened or just keep this between the two of us? I ask this because, if the things I said really put him in a bad place, he might need someone to talk to and rely on. And clearly I'm not and probably won't ever be that person for him. Yet if I involve our parents, he might see it as some sort of betrayal. Me making an ever bigger deal out of this, me trying to save face, or somehow pressuring him into forgiving me. TLDR. My brother and I had a talk. It was a start. But he probably won't forgive me anytime soon, and has no interest in starting a new relationship. I'm wondering what to do next. Edit. Everyone, I'm so happy. My brother just texted me the link to a Call of Duty review he'd mentioned earlier last night when we were going over my PS5. I wasn't expecting any contact at all and spent the whole day replaying our conversation in my head, going over what I could have done better, and wondering how he was taking it. It's something so ordinary and meaningless to most people, and probably to most of you siblings sharing something they think the other will find interesting. But we've never had that. I've seen the video he sent me and texted him back. We talked briefly about it, there was no acknowledgement of the deeper topics of our conversation, which is probably for the best at this time. I'll try not to read much into it. I don't know if it's some kind of olive branch on his part, and I'm in no way seeing this as an invitation to be in his life. But at least, this is an indication that he's somewhat okay, and that our last encounter won't weigh too heavily between us when we meet again. And that maybe he's giving me permission to someday text him to share something trivial, just because I think he may like it. I'm so grateful he was able to give me that. Third story. NC Mom falsely claims OP is abusive to his partners, and has ruined his life for the past 20 years just for her petty revenge, supported by her husband, now realizing they will die all alone as all their children went NC cursing her out. This is a comment reply, but I thought it was worthy of its own post, since I see so many people on here wondering if they are alone in situations like this. TLDR, you're not alone. If it seems weird and you have to ask, it's wrong. Healthy families don't need these types of sanity checks. And parents are arse holes. So. I recently found out that my N mom has been actively sabotaging my relationships for 20 years, enabled and supported by my dad. Here's how. I have a volatile relationship history and could never figure out why. Relationships would be great for a few months. Then things got serious part of this was introducing them to my family. Then my partners would get super angry, and things stopped making sense. The women would argue with me, using the same words that I had never used, and bring up situations that I had never talked about. Like they say, you're wrong because you fight with all your girlfriends. I just thought this language was some weird girl's lexicon, that they all picked up on social media or something. I worked on this a lot. Therapy. Reading. Over the years, I had a lot of formal training on communication, emotional intelligence, de-escalation, and teamwork due to my job. All of which reaffirmed that I wasn't doing anything wrong. I never had any communication issues outside of my parents and my relationships, and I have been repeatedly praised for my skills professionally. I am a trusted friend in my current friend group. But the relationship problem persisted. It was like all my partners turned literally insane and detached from reality with an unjustifiable and seething anger for me. It was weird. I even thought I was autistic for a while and was never going to be able to understand communication and relationship dynamics. This persisted even after I had myself medically tested for autism. It was negative because the problems kept up. I just assumed the testing wasn't that accurate. This issue continued with my last ex, who is the one that finally catalyzed the explanation for all this. That my mom had been actively and intentionally sabotaging my relationships behind my back for 20 years. She would carry on relationships with my partners or exes without my knowledge. These friendships continued after we would break up, and they were out of my life. My mom had been badmouthing me, warning them about my volatile, unstable, and abusive nature, then inserting herself as a safe haven for them should they need it. All while painting herself as a loving mother who simply loved her son and wanted him to get better. Get better means some pretty perverted stuff in this context. How I found all this out. This last ex, and I decided to be friends after our relationship fell apart. We were hanging out one day, she was showing me photos from a vacation or something when I saw a text pop up from my mom on her phone. She got quiet. So I asked if and why she was talking to my mom. It was an innocent question because I was in NC with my parents at this point. So I had no idea what business they were talking about. 
She unexpectedly broke down crying and just unloaded everything that had gone on and how she felt super guilty. Her friendship with my mom was innocent enough from her perspective. Just friends with her BF's mom. No problem. The decline between my parents and myself that led to my going NC happened after our breakup. My ex was there for me through it. She did not understand the situation and wanted to be my bridge back to my family eventually. She had no idea that parents could do what mine did to me. That was until she saw the immense amount of sudden positive change in me after going NC. She also witnessed all the abusive, toxic drama my parents threw at me when the NC actions climaxed. So the guilt came from being in a situation where she knew what she did was wrong, despite having my best interest at heart, and not telling me about it because our relationships were over. She let me read the entire text chat between her and my mother and supplemented it with a description of all the phone calls there were many. I was just in shock at the magnitude of the betrayal that I was hearing. At the same time, I recognized that this was the missing puzzle piece I didn't even know was missing as to why all my other relationships fell apart. What I saw in the texts and heard from my ex was a betrayal on a level I never thought possible. I read texts from my mom saying awful things about me that just weren't true. Straight up lies. It was the same phrasing and situations that this ex, and every ex before her, had been inexplicably throwing out in arguments. The commonality was not social media. It was my mom. She was intentionally undermining trust in my relationships, which, as we all know, is one of the foundational pieces of successful relationships. I told my partners I cheated, I lied, I abused, I manipulated, etc. And that I was, just like this since birth. Discovering all this truth was a trip. Some of these exes I had loved very deeply and were soulmates. The breakups still haunt me to this day. Thinking about the consequences of her manipulation is infuriating. I could have been married and had a family of my own ten years ago if it wasn't for this bullsh tea. All the pain this had indirectly caused. And guess who I ran to every single effing time. That's right, my parents. Whenever I was going through a bad breakup or other issues, I would trust and rely on my family for support, which is exactly what these perverts got off on. Pulling all the strings and then getting the emotional payout at the end. Over and over and over again, it is sick. So I took my ex and sat down with my brother and his wife because they were mentioned quite frequently in these texts. Lots of lies about them as well. I knew I also needed other people to corroborate my side of the story with how much gaslighting had gone on. The intent was to set the record straight and get out of this alternate reality that had been crafted for us. We all had a heart-to-heart -heart on the situation and what was going on. Oh man, things blew up. My brother is chill and much more diplomatic than me, and I've never seen him close to being that angry. Over the four hours we talked together, he had to keep getting up and taking a walk because he was losing it. He confessed that his past relationships were like this as well, and he couldn't figure out why. He pored over the text history, seeing the same phrases his own exes used in fights. I saw how family events he organized were twisted through photos and words to manipulate my ex against me. His wife saw lie after lie about her from my mom. This resulted in my brother going and see with them as well, because it was so horrific. He had no idea they were capable of that either. A good aside. My brother confronted my parents after he calmed down. He wanted to give them the chance to reconcile before just cutting them off. About five sentences in, my mom interjected by denying whatever was going on and blaming everything on me being manipulative. My dad backed her up, telling him that he just imagined specific horrible events from his childhood. Straight up, like, that didn't happen, you're making it up. Or, your brother put that idea in your head. This whole situation is beyond weird. Straight up perverted. I'm still trying to sort it all out. One thing, though, discovering the truth about this has been extremely cathartic. To finally understand, it wasn't me, and I was unknowingly a victim of a very evil woman hell-bent on ruining my life. To know that my judgment that something was weird was sound, that I was doing the right thing, that I was not autistic, etc. I don't fault any of my partners or ex-partner for their part in this. Because when someone's own mother is telling you a tale about how manipulative, abusive, and awful their own son is, you listen to that. I cannot think of a single rational woman who wouldn't listen to that. This also resulted in my most recent ex and I getting back together and having a great relationship ever since. Every issue that destroyed our relationship disappeared overnight. Trust has been built. Disagreements are resolved compassionately. We're having discussions about getting married. All it took was getting my toxic parents out of my relationship when I never knew they were in it to begin with. TLDR. I am tagging this as support because this is what I want you all to take away from this. These narcotics are evil.
The depths of depravity they sink to, in order to get off your suffering or capacity, is not something a normal person can comprehend or see coming. Trust your reason. If you know you are doing the right thing and things are still super effing weird or inexplicable, then something is wrong. You may not have had the privilege of discovering the truth like I did, but that doesn't mean you should be doubting and blaming yourself. The truth is likely something you can't comprehend as a mentally healthy individual. If you could not trust your parents as a child, you could not trust them as an adult. Parents don't change. Keep pushing. Keep trusting yourself. I love you all. I hope some of you feel less alone after reading this. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.